Camp Charlie splitting us out over to the south side. See early wet testing rotation behind these walls, which is great for information gathering. The bushy call. The car can explode. Get away from the car. Get away from the car. Roll, roll, roll. Oh. Such a like in vibes, for example. Hey, could Trump potentially come back? Let's not forget they got himself a good win. Uh, I think it was on day one of the EMEA scrims. They took himself a really good win. Canina Power under a lot of pressure early on. But as we mentioned earlier, Canina Power had Iraqi Elite behind him and with Blaze now coming in to the fight as well, potentially that third party, they lose one already and now continuing on with his fight, Max. Oh, maybe eliminating Arabe Elite. There you go. That's one, two and a third knockdown and they're going to go for the flushes while they still can. That's going to be kill number three. Arab Lily still in the background. They're going to go for slow res onto Ragnar, but Kanina Power at Nice, they took that fight straight on over to Lee. Also keep in mind behind them, you got Polar Ace just hitting themselves a little bit closer towards Kanina Power to potentially driving over to that fight if they do see more kills go over in the kill feed. Blaze do unfortunately lose one. It got a bit too close for comfort towards Iraqi Elite now, just three members, and you mentioned the source. Well, they're going to need balls right now because the west side still isn't done yet. We still got to keep in mind the side of unicorns that love cis rotating in you also had the early western rotations from now footballers and also the side of headquarters now making their way across the bridge into the action so as i mentioned once again you know still the likes of freak circus they're pretty happy right now because they're outside the fights they could still make their way and now blaze potentially going to also struggle with footballers rotating in but i like also the rotation coming out from lutz towards Camp Charlie splitting a scout over to the south side, seeing where the teams are, and that will allow them potentially a little bit of maneuver around down the side of that zone. Sneaky Jamaz, right? They're sneaky Jamaz. Look at them. <laughs> She's in the grass. You know, snakes galore as always over on this map, and it's pretty fun to see that happen. But lots are here. It is Jamaz. Be like, eh, 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 not gonna work versus me. Gonna find himself Jamaz. Gonna try and go for the flush. Put some extremely. Oh no! Ikuda of Blaze is actually able to steal it away. Oh no! Lots being a little bit mad right now. Finds Kuda out of distance and he was going to get vengeance for that kill being stolen away from him. The footballist up to two kills. Not as much as we saw last game. But you know what? That's A-OK. -okay, but the circle going to be actually pretty heavily shifting away from them in the hands of Kanina Power. And now Gonzo, not like these last... teams, the likes potentially of headquarters to climb up onto into getting to this zone, which Kanina Power are currently in control of. You see now both these squads on the outside that were hoping for that summon rotation. Obviously, Freak Circus and also mods. They now have to move their way in. And that could be mods moving their way into Polar Race. Oh no, footballist, they're going for the car rotation. I don't like this one. That's a risky call. And then Pied himself is going to become the bridge troll. The car's going to explode. Get away from the car. Get away from the car. Rom, rom, rom. Um, oh no, okay. I tried it. You should get away from the car. I was fuming. And headquarters, they're going to be taking that kill for granted. There's now footballist, unfortunately. You know what? I say it on every single map. If you can cross the roads and cross those bridges early, do so. Footballist, unfortunately, taking a little bit too long to do so. They lose an extra player, down to any Solke and Lutz. But we've got Solke, so as I said it, I'm a fanboy of Solke. So uh, anything is still possible for them. I think they chose also the wrong bridge to rotate around Max, man. They could have gone around to the Count Charlie. A little wider, yeah. To where Freak are going, but Freak now getting themselves a knock-up into this zone. And as we mentioned again, this is where High Ground is going to play in favor of these teams. The vision game as well, right? Because going into this final couple of zones, there's trees, there's rocks everywhere where teams can hide. And if you can spot them before they get hidden inside of the grass, then you can start to make those moves. Oh, I don't think the Polar Ace know that some players actually... Oh, he heard the footsteps for sure now. There you go. He heard the footsteps. Going to go for a little sneaky grenade on the 2-2 split of mods as they're going to try and push their way out of Quarry. And Quarry sucks for the simple reason. You only got a few areas you can actually run out of. So it's super predictable. It's really hard for you to move out of this location because if a team knows you're inside Quarry, they've just got to hold on to specific areas. Like here, you got an entry point on the left and an entry point on the right. And it's going to be really tricky. At least they got a small error that's currently in the circle. So that's still going to be a really good redeeming factor for mods on this position in Quarry. The Polar Race now, they got a wind of information about mods being in the Quarry section. They're going to get sprayed down from not only Polar Race, but even from a team up above, which is the team you mentioned, right? Freak Circus getting somewhat involved on this one. So uh, mods, I believe this might just be the end of their tail extremely soon as Polar Race trying to position to put even more pressure on this team. 
especially because freak circuits need to get behind polar ace to make it inside of the zone now actually shifting over to more compounds being inside the zone which can empower and both side of class are taken up so if they're going to have that advantage in that vision that we talk about moving into this final zone because still many teams to rotate and still got nine teams keep in mind in oh, now 60 minutes to this game oh elusive actually used it but he's able to find himself a knock onto moss even though it's by the blue zone it works still whatsoever polar ace got ked did retreat back over to the compound of Jody and Freak Circus. They're going to use the absolute mayhem happening between these two teams in the compound to take a more controlling position on the edge of the circle to deny the teams to make their way through and go as the gatekeepers of this game. The mods, unfortunately, using almost everyone except for Bava, just going to be just able to crawl his way inside. Oh my god, Freak Circus getting absolutely obliterated by the side by Ked of Polar Ace. And Polar Ace, they're still in this game. They're still looking strong, but it's time for them to push their way forward onto Freak Circus. They got two knockdowns for themselves, looking for the flushes, looking for earlier the last play of, of um. <laughs> Jesus Christ, of, of, of Freak Circus, sorry for that, as uh, now just a little bit of utility will be enough, Jody coming on through, that nade looks pretty clean, will be exploded onto Freak, and there you have it, Freak Circus will get eliminated in 8th position, 17 still remain, and this our game is still going to be insane, that's Bava, the snake of this game is going to be striking while he was low, Polar Ace now, they've got the information, be careful, Ked is still in play in the back end, Jody's going to be taking a small 1v1 versus Bava, and apparently you don't have to peek out if you can go for the nade play, and he's going to trade the nades. Here it is. It's a Pokeball. You've got to catch him. But Jody's going to run back away towards the fallen ally that was Savage X to get him rest back up on his feet. Whew. Well, that grenade is not being cooked by Barber, so will not have that element of surprise, but does get a knockup. Thankfully, the other side of class engaging into this team fight as well as now they try to rotate, eliminate Polar Ace away from the game. But keep an eye on the rest of these teams. Unicorns of Love and still headquarters as well as one remaining member for Kanina Power still in this game. Oh, Eggs is going to get spotted away by headquarters. Headquarters eliminate Kanina Power in sixth position overall. Five teams still remain in this lobby. Now it's going to be turned down to four as headquarters also will be taking the L in this one. Mods, still got Unicorns of Love, the CIS team, Class, and even Ked, the last player of Polar Ace, as they're going to be able to find himself another player. That's going to be Polar Ace. Ked making it up at minimum of third position with also six kills. Polar Ace really popping off on this third day of EMEA League scrims. They got himself to number one position yesterday with the chicken dinner, and today they're looking strong, maybe able to secure another chicken dinner on day three. Well, that is what we will be hoping for. This zone will shift once again. No teams inside of it. And now comes the question of how quickly can Ked snake into this zone himself, class, and also the other side, Unicorns of Love CIS. They both still have full squads. Yeah, the full squads are definitely going to be really impactful for the side of class. You know, Unicorns of Love CIS got a three-man team. Fabi did get eliminated a little bit early in this game. But the issue is now... Class, unfortunately, they're behind these walls, which is great for information gathering, but unfortunately, you can't really fight back extremely strongly from this kind of spot. So you're going to have to actually put yourself in the side and the danger inside the reticules of your enemies to be in a somewhat decent spot. But Class, able to go for the res on their fallen ally. And now they'll be truly back as a four-man team. But have Class spotted out Ked? I'm not 100% sure, but he's going to try and just move away. Ked's going to get flushed away by Roller77 of Unicorns of Love CIS, and now will be turned into a 4v3 between Unicorns of Love CIS and Class. Who will be able to take this one? The high ground is somewhat to the advantage of Unicorns of Love CIS. Unicorns of Love CIS will be losing my like it. They got four kills for themselves. Class trying to take control in the later game stages. They take the three kills over to Unicorns of Love CIS. And Class Esports will be taking game number two of the day on the good old map, jungle map of San Jose.